In this video, we're going to look at titrations. This is the final version of quantitative analysis. And what a titration is, is it's where you use the volume of a known solution. And meaning, what I mean by known is that the concentration of the solution is known very precisely. And we call that solution a titrant to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. And we call that the analyte. And normally what you do is you put your titrant in this thing called a burette. And the burette is a long tubular shaped piece of glass. And at the bottom there's a stopcock and you can turn the stopcock and that allows some of the titrant to come out and go into the analyte. And the analyte is in some kind of flask. It could be an Erlenmeyer flask um, or whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. So you have your analyte down here and you have your titrant in here. And on the burette are these graduations that allow you to measure volume. So as you add it in, the level falls and you can measure the volume based on the level uh, inside the burette. Now inside the analyte we usually use an indicator. And the indicator is just something that you put in that will change color when you reach what we call the equivalence point. So the equivalence point is where the moles of the titrant equal the moles of the analyte and I write here by stoichiometry. So, you know, if you have a one-to-one -one mole ratio, then you'll have, an, uh, then they'll be equal in the sense that the number of moles of the titrant will equal the number of moles of the analyte. If you have a two-to-one stoichiometry, then to reach the equivalence point, you'll need two moles of whatever reagent has the two in front of it and one mole of the other reagent. So that's what we mean by the, the equivalence point. We've reached the end of the reaction by stoichiometry. Most often these reactions are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can kind of think of it as the moles of titrant equals the moles of analyte. I think we're going to do both. So that's what the equivalence point is, and that's really important. And this is usually where the indicator changes color. Now, we're not going to get into too much detail about this, but I do want to point out in this video that the equivalence point is slightly different from what we call the end point. Um, I don't want you to focus on this distinction very much at this stage. We're going to talk about this a lot more in second semester. But technically, at, when the indicator changes color, that's what we call the end point. And that may be very close to, but not precisely at the equivalence point. So just keep that in mind. And that's because it may take a little bit of excess of one of the reagents to get the indicator to change color. But in the end, for now, um, for chapter four in the first semester, the indicator changes color at what we call the equivalence point, which is where the moles of titrant equals the moles of analyte. Okay, so let's take a look at some sample problems that involve titrations. So this is lecture problem five, which is where we have some examples of titrations. So it says a standardized solution of HCl with a concentration of 0.216 molar is used to react with 25 mils, a 25 mil solution containing an unknown concentration of barium hydroxide. Calculate the, mar the molarity of barium hydroxide if 34.61 moles mils of the HCl solution was requ required to reach the endpoint. Now this is what I was talking about with the re when we reach the endpoint. It depends on the stoichiometry. So in this case, we're going to need twice as much HCl to react with the barium hydroxide because there's a 2 to 1 mole ratio in this case. So it's not always moles of one equals moles of the other. It kind of depends on stoichiometry. But the way that we're going to set this up, it won't matter because we're going to use our mole flow chart and our mole to mole ratio to solve these problems, not necessarily that moles of one equals moles of another. So let's take a look at how we can solve this. So the first thing I like to do is I like to just identify what my titrant is and what my analyte is. So in this case, the titrant, because we know precisely the concentration and the volume, uh, I'm sorry, we know precisely the concentration. So the thing that you know the, precisely the concentration of, that's going to be your titrant. So the HCl in this case is the titrant. So we're going to know both the concentration and the volume of that solution. And then the analyte, all we're going to know is the volume, and then it's going to ask us for the concentration. So our titrant in this case is the HCl, and our analyte is the barium hydroxide. So what this thing says is we've, we have um, 34.61 mLs of the 0 0.2016 molar HCl, and we have 25.00 mLs 
of the analyte. So what we have to do is, is we have to go, in this case, from volume of HCl to the number of moles of HCl. From moles of HCl, we can go to the moles of the barium hydroxide, and then we can get our concentration by uh, solving the molarity equation. So remember, the molarity of the barium hydroxide, if we want to get the concentration of barium hydroxide, we need to know two things. We need to know the moles, and we need to know the volume of the solution. So in this case, we know the volume of the solution, which is 0 0.02500 liters. I've already converted that in my head from the 25 mils to, the, to liters by dividing it by 1,000. So what we need to get is the moles of barium hydroxide. So let's start working on this. So we have 34.61 milliliters of the HCl, and we got to get to moles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this from milliliters to liters. And the reason why I do that is because our concentration is 0.2016 molar. So for every one liter of HCl, there is 0.2016 moles. And now for reaching the endpoint, we're getting to the stoichiometric equivalent. So at stoichiometric equivalent, for every two moles of HCl, we're going to have one mole of barium hydroxide reacted and that's because of the two to one ratio. And so at this point, we're good because we now have our moles of barium hydroxide, which is what we need to go into our concentration calculator, calculation. So if you calculate the number of moles, you get 0 0.003489 moles of barium hydroxide out of our stoichiometry, which we can then plug into our barium hydroxide concentration calculation. 0 0.003489 moles. So our concentration of barium hydroxide is going to equal 0 0.1395 molar. And so that's our answer. So you can see what we did was we took our titrant, we added a certain amount of titrant until we reached the stoichiometric equivalence. Then after we reach the stoichiometric equivalence, we come up with the number of moles and of the, of the unknown of the analyte, and then we can calculate its concentration. Okay, so let's take a look at the second problem. So this one says, vinegar solutions contain acetic acid in water. A, a titration is performed on a 5 gram sample of vinegar solution, and it requires 39.1 mils of a 0 0.108 molar NaOH solution to fully react. Calculate the mass percentage of acetic acid in the vinegar solution. So this one's kind of interesting because it's asking us for a mass percent. So if we want to get the mass percent of vinegar, we're going to need the mass of acetic acid divided by the mass of vinegar. And then we multiply that by 100. So in this case, our mass of the vinegar is 5 grams according to the problem, and we need to get that mass of acetic acid in order to solve this problem. So the way that we're going to work this is we have our titrant, which is the NaOH, and we're using 39.1 mLs of a 0 0.108 molar solution, and this, is, this was what we needed to reach the end point, which we can then work back to figure out our analyte. So if we can get the moles of the analyte, which is acetic acid, we can get the mass of acetic acid. And then that's what we need up here in our, in our question. So let's start setting this up from our known, which is the titrant. So we have 39.1 mLs of NaOH. And we're going to use our concentration to get to moles. So for every 1,000 mLs, we have 1 liter. And then based on our concentration, for every 1 liter, we have 0 0.108 moles of NaOH. Now I know because of the 1 to 1 stoichiometry, for every 1 mole of NaOH, 
I have one mole of acetic acid. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put, um, for acetic acid, I'm going to put AA, just so that I don't have to write out the whole chemical formula. But it doesn't matter, you could write out the whole chemical formula. Now in this case, because we're looking for a mass of the acetic acid for our percent composition, we're going to use the molecular weight of acetic acid. And if you look that up on the periodic table, your molecular weight of acetic acid is 60.08 grams. So for every one mole of acetic acid, you have 60.08 grams. So this is going to give us uh, 0 0.2537 grams of acetic acid, which we can plug in up here. And then when you solve this, when you divide 0.2537 divided by 5 and then multiply by 100, you get 5.07% of acetic acid. So that shows you some examples of how you can use titrations. It doesn't necessarily have to give you a concentration at the very end. As you can see, we can throw a mass percent at you. Um, but you know how to do that. The main thing is just to figure out at first what you need and then use the stoichiometry to get you to what you need.